So I'm going to shift a little bit to some of the poetic in the cultural pantheon. A simple lust, freedom for all, forever. A simple lust, peace, lasting peace, which can only be achieved with true justice and liberation. A Simple Lust, the title of the fourth book of the great African poet, Dennis Brutus, son of South Africa. Now, I, I wanted to start with poetry and I wanted to start with Dennis because uh, for those who don't know, Dennis Brutus was not only perhaps one of the greatest poets of the continent of the last century and early parts of this century, but he also was someone who embodied these concepts of mentoring, of connecting and networking, issues of justice and peace, generations from young to old. And the connecting tissues of what he wrote about and talked about was about this idea of passion of lust or love, of love power like truth power, as Satyagraha, India's Mohandas Gandhi said, to talk simply about how we have to act in our own lives and our organizations to make peace. But of course, if you want to go back even further, for folks maybe even older than me, Dennis rose to prominence as the key coordinator of the campaigns for the sports boycott, and especially Olympic boycott, of racist apartheid South Africa. So when Dennis was serving his decades of exile in the United States, where I'm from, he used to love to tell us stories about when he was in prison on Robben Island, he uh, had a cell right next to Mandela's. And he was occupying the cell that decades before, Mohandas Gandhi had occupied. And in talking about his youthful experiences and his successful campaigning to isolate apartheid South Africa in the Olympic community and from the international sports world, Dennis embodied as a great poet, as a great organizer, and as a sports thinker, these connections embodied in the work for sports culture, and peace. Now, um, I'm here with my colleague as a co-secretary general of the International Peace Research Association. I, I don't usually speak at sports events. I'm not thought of necessarily as a great sports figure, but I try to represent today. So I, I, I do have on you know, the South Africa pin, and I have, I have at least a lanyard from Robben Island that's hosting <coughs> our conference uh, yesterday and tomorrow. But some of you know that I also just came from Brazil, where uh, simultaneous to this, our South American Peace Research Association is happening just in these days as well. And I, I have to say that one can't really go to Brazil even for a peace research conference without talking to a certain degree about sports, and particularly about soccer, about football. <laughs> So I have an important quote I want to read from uh, the National Football Museum of Brazil. Because in fact, their incredible museum, which talks about their incredible history as football fanatics and champions, it's a special exhibit called Contra-Attack on the women of football. And the point from this very short quote I'm going to read is simply that talking about the issues and the history of women in sports is not just about that question, sports. It's not even just about women in football. It's about the basic questions about equality at their roots. More than ever, people are discussing the importance of gender equity. Bringing women's football to the agenda is to remind society that this is more than a spectacle 
of excellent athletics. It is an invitation to a collective reflection on the necessary efforts in this journey for equal rights. That's from the National Union of Football. So from South Africa to Brazil and India, I have to also say uh, with, uh, with Christine that uh, really, as you may have noticed in her shirt, we, we are, in fact, <laughs> representing, or I think I messed up the whole microphone thing here. We are representing, uh, of course, <laughs> Team Ibra. <laughs> International <laughs> because that's the team for all of us, the team of peace. And I'm simply going to end with a very, very short poem of Dennis Lucas's to remind us all about these connections. Dennis wrote, There will come a time, there will come a time, we believe, when the shape of the planet and the divisions of the land will be less important, will be caught in a glow of friendship, a red star of hope, will illuminate our lives, a star of hope, a star of joy, a star of freedom. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get there together.